thanks for tuning into my YouTube channel uh, for epicgenelectronics.com. Today I'm going to talk about stepper motors. Now, I have been infatuated with stepper motors for about 14 years, most likely. And the reason why I like this motor so much is because it gives you the opportunity to do things very easily uh, that will be quite, quite hard or complicated as if done with a different motor, such as a brush DC motor or a, or a three-phase brushless DC. Now, the reason why this stepper is so powerful and so convenient is because it moves in steps. Well, duh, obviously that's the idea, that's why it's called a stepper. Uh, but there are, there are two things that we can deduct from this very important uh, piece of information. First of all, if I can move in steps and I know how, how big or how small the step is, in other words, the, uh, the distance, the angular distance for that step, I can pretty much control position by issuing a number of steps. Uh, I could say I want to move uh, half uh, of a rotation and if I know how many steps that is, I'll be able to start and stop the motor and precisely stop where I want. Now, at the same time, if I know uh, how, uh, if I coordinate the rate of uh, generation of these steps, which is pretty much the uh, frequency of these steps on a per second basis, what I'm actually getting is I'm controlling the speed, the angular speed of the motor. And I can do this with lots of precision and accuracy without the need of closing the loop, which means I don't have chaff encoders, I don't have analog Twitter converters, no PID loop, but still I can control both my position and my speed without having to look into what the motor is doing. This is great news. It makes it so simple, so easy, and I guess I'm a lazy guy, I'm an engineer. Um, I like the stuff. Unfortunately, driving a stepper is not easy by itself. It is not like a DC motor where you just apply a voltage and boom, it moves. Um, a bipolar stepper motor is made out of two electromagnets, two windings, two phases. That's how they're built. Now, of course, to obtain the motion that we're looking for, what I need to do is apply the proper sequencing of magnetization for those two windings. That is already getting complicated, uh, but it gets worse. Because the problem is, and because you can move in steps, which means that you can be moving, but you can also be stopping, uh, pretty much the winding, the electromagnet on the stepper motor is going to be a short circuit to the eyes of the driver. Now that means that current could be anything. It could be 5 amps, 10 amps, 20 amps. It can, it can get nasty. We are not going to let that current flow because it's just too, too big a current. Which means that we have to somehow regulate this current. Before we would use a limiting resistor, but there would be a, a lot of power loss across the resistor. So today we use... Uh, current regulation by like some scheme some circuitry is used to regulate the current in between sequencing the phases to generate the generate the, the motion of the motor and the current regulation that's a lot of circuitry right there so I eliminated the closed loop but now I have all this junk that I have to put in order to control this guy what seemed to be uh, making something simpler has already become more complex. And 10 years ago that would have been the case. Yes, it was more complicated, it was uh, a lot of extra circuitry and it was a nightmare. So really, what have we achieved? But today that's not the case. Because today we have chips that can do this. One single chip, uh, what is called an internal indexer uh, with two H bridges and a very simple logic allows you to control this motor with only two signals, step and direction. It is like cheating, I like to say, because it's so simple, it's ridiculous. I mean, a kindergartner could be moving this motor, which required a PhD student a few years ago. So I'm gonna show you how this guy works, and I'm gonna show you that you have no excuse anymore. You should be able to take this to any stepper motor and put it to good use in your robots, uh, in your CNC machines, uh, you name it, stepper motors, I don't think they're gonna go away, they're just too awesome. 
All right, you're looking here at the clock. It's actually a square wave signal that is being fed into the step input. The controller, the logic inside of the device is saying every time I see a rising edge, I'm going to generate one step. So how does that look if I look at the current? It's kind of messy, so let's zoom out a little bit. And that's my gorgeous signal right there. It is a sine wave because basically the device is generating a 32 degrees of micro stepping sine wave. This is the reason why we have such a, a beautiful motion, which is better than the motion that we get with full step. Now, let me show you full step. All right, here is full step, and uh, I'm going to freeze this. Now I have disabled the motor because it is so noisy at full step and that is the reason why we like micro step but uh, just to explain basically what you see here is full current on one direction and then full current the opposing direction and notice that every time a rising edge comes up the device changes now there will be a second phase in here that I would need a second current proof to look at but basically it will be the same wave 90 degrees out of phase uh, all of that sequencing is taken care of by the chip, so you don't have to worry about it. Another thing that I want to show, right now, current is, is basically being limited at that value. But notice what the outputs are doing. And all of this switching that you see here is basically the current regulation. Uh, notice how the current goes up and it goes down as basically the current regulation sees the current being equal to a, a body that we are comparing against that's when the edge bridge is disabled so by changing B ref which is an external analog output that you provide you are basically changing the magnitude of this current so if I were to change my B ref notice that I can change the magnitude of the current and as I change the magnitude of my current what I am changing is the duty cycle of uh, basically how how long will the edge bridge be on or off notice that I can have very low current but that of course implies very little torque at the motor but if I increase my B ref the regulator will be uh, increasing the current that it will allow to flow through the phase this guy can do up to 1.6 amps so that's pretty much a lot of current for a stepper and uh, right there I am basically reaching thermal shutdown so as you can see it comes and go that's because the device is getting too hot um, if I decrease the current now when we do micro stepping that will be like me changing the beer breath but of course I don't want to be there changing beer breath so the controller does it for me the controller is continuously changing that current so that I don't have to worry about it. Let's take a look at it again. Notice that the current is changing, it's going up and down. It may not look like a waveform, but if I look, if I change the resolution on the horizontal scale, you will see that the sine wave is being drawn. Now I'm moving the motor very slowly, so that's why we have a 40 millisecond. Um, resolution on the horizontal grid but as you can see the controller is doing all that you would have had to do with your microcontroller or your DSP or whatever so you don't have to worry about this this is awesome